Okay, everybody, welcome. This is a Lucena Research webinar, and we're rolling out today a really exciting new product. We call it the Event Analyzer. Uh, we'll, we'll dive into it deeply, but uh, high level picture is um, this product enables you to define uh, relevant events that may happen in the market or to individual stocks uh, to analyze um, how those affect uh, future prices and how to take advantage of them in a trading strategy. Next. So before we get started, we have to go through a couple disclaimers. Um, first of all, Lucina Research does not provide investing advice. Uh, we're not a registered investment uh, agency, uh, so please uh, consult uh, your advisor before uh, you make any investing decisions. Next, do not assume that these will be profitable. Past success does not guarantee future success. And uh, the results we're going to show you are hypothetical. They're based on studies in the past. Uh, and uh, there is certainly risk with uh, trading. Uh, we don't necessarily account for every possible risk or every, every possible uh, source of cost. So please um, treat uh, what we're showing uh, as hypothetical. Um, let me introduce uh, our CEO, Erez Katz. Go ahead, Erez. Good morning, everyone. I'm Erez Katz. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder, uh, along with Tucker of Lucena Research. Uh, we're very excited to present the event analyzer to you today. It's a, um, a very um, exciting product, and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing the stage today with Tucker. I'm a uh, former F-15 pilot. I'm now a professor at Georgia Tech, where I teach uh, courses in artificial intelligence and finance. Um, I've published uh, over 120 research publications. Uh, I've uh, consulted with top online brokers. I've also spent a year at a hedge fund as a quantitative analyst um, at Georgia Tech. Um, I've been steering my uh, research and teaching towards, uh, towards this topic, uh, applying machine learning to trading and investing. Um, we're aiming for about uh, 45 to 60 minutes max. We're going to um, talk in general about uh, financial market events, how, to, how do events affect prices, and how can you analyze those. We're going to talk about our flagship product, QuantDesk, and then show you live examples uh, with QuantDesk and event analysis. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Tucker. Um, so we'll try and play it uh, as co-piloting this uh, presentation. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, when you think about market events, and we had a previous uh, webinar that was more theoretical uh, as a background to this webinar, but... Uh, you know, events can really apply to multitude um, uh, types of investment. Uh, essentially, events are uh, predictable behavior that can, can be derived from an event, can sometimes lead to a profitable strategy. This is really what the product that we're go are going to show you. But if you think about events, it could be any type of events. It could be technical events such as Golden Cross or, or, or Death Cross. It could be a fundamental event where a market uh, moves from an earning surprise or a stock split or PE ratio uh, that has moved from previous levels. And it could be uh, geopolitical events. Think about um, hurricanes. Think about uh, political uh, frictions in the Middle East. These types of events can move markets as well. Of course, uh, oil price fluctuations, currency rate fluctuations. All these things can apply to an event study. Um, if, if you think about um, how can people respond to events as they trade all day long, whether you're a fundamental investor or technical investor, but um, you know the true value of events, since as you heard before about the market efficient uh, hypothesis, um, People respond to events very quickly. So uh, on, on the core value, events uh, are already factored to many of the prices that you see published on the ticker. Um, what we contend at Lucena is that by applying machine learning approach, you can identify complex events 
and essentially isolate securities that are most likely to move predictably as a result of this event. And that is a task that's not simple for a spreadsheet or the naked eye or intuition. This is something that requires heavy computing power. And what we are hoping to demonstrate to you today that we have put together a product that does exactly that. So before we get to the demo or the, the specifications of how, how the event study works, let's just kind of go back and uh, identify what, what is an event study. Uh, and really it's an empirical study performed on a security that has experienced a significant catalyst occurrence. This is from Invest, Investopedia. So, you know, meaningful events are really the ones we're looking for that create a meaningful change in the psyche or the behavior of, uh, of the price move. Um, if you uh, uh, look at some of the uh, theoretical, Tucker, can you, can you expand on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, starting back, um, uh, I guess, as much as 20 years ago, um, this was a seminal journal paper um, by a, a guy named uh, McKinley, uh, where he identified a way to analyze how news events affect stock prices. And this is from his uh, seminal paper there. Now, um, you see three lines there. Uh, one line represents what happens to stock prices uh, in the event of good news for the company. The other line, one of the other lines represents uh, bad news. And the one in the middle represents what happens actually if there's no news. So let, let's step through this a little bit. Um, he looked at thousands of stocks and uh, many more thousands of news events. And whenever there was a news event related to a stock, he looked at the uh, performance uh, 20, 21 days before the event and the price 21 days after the event. And uh, for each of these events, um, he collected all this price data and then he, collect, then he created these average price charts. So uh, let's look at, uh, at positive events. That's the line that ends up going up. Now, uh, fixate here on this uh, blue line in the middle. Uh, that blue line is the date where the news event happened. So a couple interesting things to note here. Uh, on average, the um, price of the stock uh, is creeping up from 20 days before the event uh, up until the day of the event. But on the day of the event, you see um, a big um, punch up that represents uh, about a 1% uh, uh, gain in the, in the price of the stock. Uh, so from the moment of the event um, and up until the next day, we see a, a big punch up. Uh, it continues up uh, for another day after that. Uh, but then after that time, the price uh, uh, remains uh, about even. There's not uh, much, uh, much change after that. Um, uh, now for negative events, that's the line that's going down. Similar thing you see here. Um, the price creeps down before the event. Um, and uh, the very first day of the event, you see, see a big shock downwards. And it continues down a little bit after that. Um, then uh, one thing that's kind of interesting about this chart is uh, for these negative events, you see over, say, about the next uh, eight days or so, a gradual creep up in the price. Um, so this is potentially indicating that on uh, negative news events, um, the market may tend to overreact, uh, and then the price res responds back upward. But uh, again, this is, a, this is from 1997, um, and the market has changed a lot since then. Uh, perhaps uh, it responds a lot more quickly to news. But uh, this is one of the most foundational papers that, that, that establish this technique. Now again, this is a simple event, a news event, and uh, our capabilities uh, enable you to uh, define much more uh, complex events than just, okay, there was a news article. And uh, Ares will talk more about that too. Ares? Great. Thanks, Tucker. So um, we do support complex event uh, detection, and uh, we enable investors to really define what constitutes an event identify the stock universe that most likely uh, will move following this event. And then we allow you to simulate a trading strategy that assesses the extent of the benefit of uh, exploiting that predictable behavior. This is an interesting uh, uh, tidbit that I, I found through Invest, uh, through Wikipedia, um, about how they define event-driven. And I want to get your attention to the second paragraph. It says event-driven investing strategies are typically used only by large 
institutional investors, such as hedge funds and private equity firms. That's because traditional equity investors, including managers of equity mutual funds, do not have the expertise or access to information necessary to properly analyze the risks associated with many of these corporate events. So, you know, obviously we at Lucena take a big exception to that, uh, that uh, paragraph because we are really, in a way, providing the means to really empower the uh, part of the market of the investment community that has not had until now had the access to that uh, type of technology and capabilities. Hopefully we can prove to you today that this is a, a game changer um, product and uh, can really utilize effectively by any professional investor. Um, just as a quick background, you know, if you remember, Quandesk provides uh, multiple modules. We have given you webinars or previous webinars on our former launches, uh, the Price Forecaster, if you remember, uh, Portfolio Optimizer, Hedge Finder. Uh, we are now um, deploying our event analyzer. And every, any of these four modules works in conjunction with our back tester that allows you to simulate uh, a true uh, scenario of investment in the past and not knowing what the future holds as if you had used those strategies of any of these <clears throat> technologies. Uh, if you um, uh, would like to learn more about some of the previous modules, you haven't had a chance to see any of our webinars or haven't seen our website, by all means, uh, we do have recording of our previous webinars, or you can absolutely call us anytime and uh, we can give you a demo of any of those. So let's go to the screens and I'll kind of try and define um, how the event definition takes place. This is, by the way, coming directly from Quandesk. I'm going to demo it live to you in a few minutes, but I'm going to go screen by screen and show you how it works. It's a pretty involved screen. I'm going to show you step by step all the components on that screen. So the first thing is the event, uh, event study name and the date range that you want to uh, apply the study to. Harris? The next, yes, sorry. Go ahead. One thing I wanted to point out is um, uh, for those who are um, sticklers with regard to statistics, which is, of course, really important, um, is you can conduct this study, say, in the past uh, to see which uh, factors matter uh, and then step forward and do your back test. So, for instance, you could... Uh, select parameters and so on, like you're showing here, say in 2011, but then actually run your back test in 2012. So you're, uh, you're doing your studies out of sample. Thanks. That's, that's a, and that's really important because you are, uh, in a way, doomed to see good results or great results if it's in sample because that's what you base the event and you refined it based on these parameters. So it's very important to conduct an out of sample uh, back testing. Thanks, Tucker. That's a good, uh, good point. Um, in any event, uh, once you define the event uh, date range and the name of the event, these are the event types that we support, I mentioned before, and we will add additional types as, as the need comes and as you tell us that you need something new that we don't have, that is uh, something we always listen to and, and add additional event types. Now, you can see as you pick up the event types, there are a set of indicators that can help you identify and refine the level of granularity of how these conditions, these type of events, apply to, um, to your study. For example, change in volume or an event that is 52 week high. Uh, these are just simple events that can be defined as part of the event definition, right? Um, and then you have on the bottom additional indicators that can be added through another step in our, in our refinement. And I'll show you how, how they work. You can see that each indicator is coming with a histogram of the sample data based on the stock universe and uh, the min and max level that you want to limit the scan to to identify uh, your specific equity list for the event. So once you define the event and you have all these factors in place, uh, you can start scanning for the events uh, that had have been triggered between these dates using these parameters. Anything you want to add, Tucker, to this screen before I move to the next one? No. Um, well, I did want to say that those uh, histograms are a really powerful tool because it lets you see um, uh, uh, sort of where the bulk of the uh, data is. And, and if, if, if you move those little slider bars around, uh, you can see graphically um, how much of the data you're sort of honing in on. But, you know, people see that live in a few moments, too. 
Okay, so moving uh, right along. So I've scanned the event now, and this is what uh, came up. So you can see here on the, on the screen, uh, the raw data that came from the event shows you the equity, the symbol, uh, just a company name for reference, the event date, and the frequency, how many times that symbol, that, that security actually um, was triggered over the course of the event uh, date range. Uh, you can see also uh, the five to 20 days uh, change in price following the event for that security specifically, right? Um, on the bottom, you can see a more of a summary depiction of the data. You can see how many events in total were triggered um, and what is the average or the mean um, move for the entire universe together, uh, uh, five days, 10 days, 15 days, or 20 days thereafter. So again, we give you an aggregate view of, okay, here's what happened after the event for the time period that you are looking at. And uh, here is what uh, happened in total for the entire universe of stocks that came back from the scan. So just quickly to, uh, to recap, uh, essentially, um, you can see the price changes and the summary on the bottom uh, in aggregate uh, format with the mean as the number that uh, is represented between the five days and 20 days moving, uh, um, moving average or average return, sorry, not moving average, average return uh, into the future. Okay. Now, this is the interesting uh, part of the process. This is the analysis pr process. So we have the raw data. Now, how do we hone down to fine tune our scan and really find what is going to move more cohesively and predictably following the event? So you can see the heat map shows you the entire market. Uh, the color indicates a move in green moving to the upside, red moving to the downside. Uh, but what you can see on the right side here is maybe a summary of some of the sectors. And again, in aggregate, what's the average return for the number of days that you are inspecting following the event? So now you can start clicking on a strong green section or a section that shows you here that has the best upside return or downside return because you can make money, as you know, uh, both ways, depending on your strategy. But in essence, that gives you a chance to really hone down the subsectors that are more um, uh, meaningful in their moves from the event and move more predictably together from the event. So once you had identified a subsector, what you see on the bottom here, and that's really important, uh, this is kind of uh, similar to what you saw in the graph that Tucker uh, was presenting initially uh, in, in the theoretical part of the uh, of this presentation, which is uh, the study shows um, what happens to the stock universe that you've selected before the event. This is the event date right there. This is the vertical line here. And you can see how the mean, how the average behaves after the event. So this is an uptick in the, in the uh, uh, stock universe before the event date, but you can see it continues to the upside uh, following the event date. And this is a five day, uh, selection and you can do uh, 10 days, 15 days or 20 days thereafter. Um, just quickly to recap, this is the heat map with the drill down capabilities. This is the subsectors, average return matrix. Uh, on the bottom, you can see the pre and post event price chart. And this is the interesting part. Now you can see that one of the slivers here is highlighted. Um, imagine that I see a universe of stocks that shows, you know, winners as well as losers. How do I further hone down my scan to really identify a section of the first standard deviation uh, or, or the first half standard deviation of the results of the upside? Is there anything that's unique to these stocks that does not appear to exist in the rest of the universe? Can I create additional refinement? Um, I guess, measures to really find in my scan these stocks by the characteristics versus the entire universe. And that's where these little indicators come on the right. This is where the machine learning approach really becomes very effective because now I can say, okay, let me identify the winners. I can identify the entire top half of the winning part of the chart or the first section, depending on my theory. You know, I may want to exclude the outliers. I may want to include 
uh, as many stocks that are winning as possible to get as many data points as possible. It is based on your uh, discretion, how you want to use it. But on the right side, you will see with a star relevancy approach, which means how strongly correlated uh, these indicators are to the highlighted sector. And if you find something that you would like to add to your scan, you just click on the uh, physical indicator and click on the add button to make that part of the overall scan. So you can find really more winners than losers um, in this uh, result set. Uh, before I go to that uh, back tester, uh, Taco, you want to mention anything? Anything you want to add to this uh, analyze analyzing the results? Uh, the um, the main thing I would point out is um, in the lower left there that uh, that chart. That's that's an event study, and uh, what we've done is by bringing it into QuantDesk is uh, allowed you allowed you to dynamically create them to see how particular events you know how stocks respond and and with regard to complex events. And as Eris says, uh, said you can uh, add uh, more uh, definition to the event. The, the computer can guide you to suggest, hey, if you use this indicator additionally, uh, you can find, you know, perhaps even even more juice. Uh, now, one thing about that chart to keep in mind again is there's the vertical line, which is zero. That's the the time of the event, and then you want to look at, okay, what Suppose each time that event occurs, you invest in that stock. On average, what happens to the price of that stock? And that's what that uh, that average line shows going forward. So you can see after the event, in this particular case, the uh, price uh, tends to rise uh, gradually over time. Uh, another important thing to observe, uh, you know, with regard to this chart, is uh, you need to ask yourself, okay, um, if I'm going to, when I see an event like this occur. Uh, and I purchase a stock, how long am I going to stay in that stock? So, you know, you can see in this case, for instance, uh, after about 10 days, the uh, increase in price tends to uh, flatten. So if I were going to build a trading strategy around this event, I would probably only hold the stock for uh, 10 days at, at most. But uh, those, are, those are the sorts of things you want to look at when you, um, when you see this chart. Thanks, Tucker. Uh, so again, one of the things that you want to do is put uh, that theory to dollars and cents, and that's where the back tester comes in. Uh, those of you who have seen previous webinars know um, that our back tester does trading simulation historically uh, based on uh, multiple criteria, such as uh, um, the back testing uh, is done with uh, with settings. You know, one of the things you can do is look through a little pop up at the event study results, the summary. For example, as Tucker mentioned, uh, how many days do you want to hold in your strategy for the equities that came back from the results of the event scan? So when the event is triggered, you're getting a bunch of equities. Do you want to buy? Do you want to sell them? If it's five days, it's going down half a percent here. If you want to hold them for 15 days, it goes up one and a half percent. Actually, 20 days is even better because it's two and a half percent. So you know, in this case, is a theory, you may want to apply a 20-day holding period because it gives you the best, uh, best uh, average return. I want to also get your attention to one more factor here, which is a standard deviation of the aggregate. Essentially, how widely spread is a sample data that represents the return of the, uh, of the uh, 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 equities uh, following 20 days, 15 days, or, or 10 days, uh, up to five days uh, in the shortest uh, amount of time. So a lower standard deviation uh, gives you a higher, uh, I guess, uh, uh, confidence that you are uh, going to move uh, predictably. Uh, a more, uh, you know, uh, spread out uh, sample data uh, would give you less confidence. So you want to see a low number, relatively speaking, here with a high return here. That in combination would give you the best, uh, I guess, approach to uh, how many days you want to hold the stock in your trading strategy. Um, quickly, uh, our backtest uh, settings are pretty standard. You know, how much cash do you want to start with? The date range that you want to conduct the backtest on? Uh, the benchmark, uh, what uh, index or, or stock do you want to compare the results of your backtest to? 
And then we apply some transaction cost as well as slippage to give you some uh, true, uh, I guess, real life scenario simulation. So you can see how it applies to a real situation. Uh, as well as uh, the event uh, study uh, settings, which is, uh, do you want to go long when you identify stocks from the event? How many days do you want to hold on to the stocks? Um, what is the maximum number of equities that you wish to hold on to? How do you select them? And what is your exit criteria? If the stock goes against you, do you want to have a stop loss? Do you want to hold it regardless for the whole period of time? So we have all these parameters to allow you to fine tune your strategy, and then you basically execute the back test. Once you've done that, you get a result in a very graphical, comprehensive uh, screen layout, as well as a very clear report that shows you by, uh, I guess, rebalancing period, every transaction that's taking place, uh, what is the buy price, what is the sell price. So it gives you a really nice analysis of exactly uh, what had happened. I'm going to show you some samples uh, when we go to the live demo. Okay, the last screen before we jump to, uh, to the live demo uh, that I'm sure you guys are anxious to see is the uh, scan. Once the event was validated, as I mentioned before, and you have uh, defined, uh, identified through the back testing that it does provide profit, you can add it to the uh, scanner. What you see here on the screen is basically the computer uh, continuously scans for triggers throughout the uh, trading periods. And if it finds that any event was triggered, it will, it will demark it with a green... Uh, a green uh, uh, background color here, and also will put down quickly for you the three or 55 stocks, depending on how many that came back from the scan from the event trigger. Based on your event definition, you can see exactly which equities now provide the opportunity to act upon them. At that point, you can decide how you want to, um, to respond to them. You can do additional research. You can ignore it if you don't uh, think it's uh, valid, but then that gives you a chance to really uh, do a signal-based kind of approach, getting a signal, identifying the stocks to act upon, and you can start um, adding them to a portfolio here. Um, Lucena's Quandes currently does not integrate directly with a trading platform, so there'll be a manual uh, either import of a CSV file or a manual entry into, a, into your trading platform. Uh, we will in the future um, um, deploy uh, full integration with some of the major uh, trading platform providers as well as uh, EMS, uh, EMSs as well as OMSs. Uh, interestingly enough, this is an interesting event you can see here, um, which is kind of cool. You can see the behavior before the event date right there on the bottom. Um, yeah, let me just show you here. So you can see the delta of a price move down uh, before the event date. The event date totally changed the average behavior to the upside. And you can see uh, how it behaved uh, uh, into the future. You know, uh, this is the mean, but you can see that if you identified some of the outliers, the sliver that is the best winning, uh, um, you know, uh, from your perspective, you know, it provides a smaller set of, the, of data, obviously. So uh, you need to be careful not to only have one or two uh, uh, symbols here because that's not going to give you the statistical um, relevancy that you need to get from the study. So it's, it's a balancing act between identifying a big enough sample that has uh, enough significance to make decisions based on. Tucker? Um, yeah, um, uh, good points. Um, one additional thing I wanted to point out with, with regard to that uh, chart there is if you look just before the day of the event, the zero day, you see that sharp drop. And of, of course that makes sense because the event was defined partly by requiring the stock to drop. But it's a, it's a nice sort of uh, sanity check, uh, you know, when you're building a definition of an event to make sure that the, uh, you know, the pricing of the stocks coming into the event makes sense with what you're anticipating. But uh, again, you're seeing the effect here of, uh, you know, in some sense, uh, as we often see, a sort of overreaction uh, in the market uh, to an event, and then sort of a reversion uh, back to the back to the mean. Okay, ready for some um, some demo. So the demo um, will take uh, a few minutes. Some of the actions require heavy computational process. Uh, that's a good time to kind of uh, in between 
uh, I guess, sections of the demo to uh, ask the questions and we'll try and answer them uh, as we mingle the answers during the demo. So uh, this is a good time to kind of uh, post some of your questions on your, on your uh, GoToWebinar panel. So let me quickly... Uh, I was going to say, we've got a couple questions already, so when you start the run, we can we can address those questions for folks. Great, great. Let me just find my screen here. Just bear with me, folks. Uh, I'll be with you in a second. Okay. Let's see what we have here. So while Ares is uh, getting set up there, um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, QuantDesk, which he's going to start up right now. So it's a it's a cloud-based product, and you're seeing the front end that uh, runs on a on a web browser. Uh, but the uh, there's there's significant uh, computational power uh, behind that uh, in the cloud. Uh, we've got a huge database of uh, historical data. Um, our database includes uh, fundamental data, price volume data, and uh, we're adding you know as Eris had talked about. Um, uh, world events like uh, hurricanes. Uh, we have uh, proprietary uh, data providers um, that that we're integrating as well that provide information, say on insider trading, for instance. Um, so it's a it's really accessing a, a, a wealth of data and computing power. Harris. Thank you, Tucker. Um, so I'm not going to go through uh, demoing the other modules of Quantes just uh, to make sure we respect your time. But um, I'd like to uh, start by um, going to the event analysis and show you um, kind of more from the end result perspective, um, how it works, and then move back to the event definition and the study itself. So let's go to the event scan. The event scan, if you remember, is the ability to go back and look for events that you've defined before and see if they were triggered. And here's one that was triggered actually today. It's called a bull market event. Um, I'm not surprised if you have uh, looked at the market lately. That's actually a very appropriate event. Uh, you can see that 20 stocks were actually identified uh, as, as part of the uh, potential investment opportunity following this trigger. Uh, the other events that you see here have not been triggered, but if they were, they will be marked as green as well, and there will be a number of equities next to them. Now, if you don't remember what the event composition was, there's a little icon here right to the right side that gives you a chance to identify, okay, what was really in the study? And you can see here that we looked at the following. Uh, equities that made 52-week high. Obviously, that's a bullish indicator for, for in, in most cases. Uh, the volume actually has is greater than the average volume uh, for the last five days. And, and also, uh, the total debt to equity ratio is, is, is certain value that is, uh, is I guess, promising, is, is good. Uh, I guess it's a low uh, debt to equity, which means the company's in good standing. I mean, these are indicators that were identified from a study that was conducted before. And again, through the refinement and the honing down on some of the sections, we identify which ones uh, are more appropriate for these events. You can see here on the bottom, the three additional indicators that were identified as, as uh, uh, appropriate for the subsector. You can see the subsector here is Russell 2000, but within the Russell 2000, we found consumer discretionary as the SEP sector to go after. Uh, Tucker, anything you want to mention? Um, no. Um, okay. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> let me continue. Good. Um, so, uh, again, if I wanted to uh, execute a trade against any of these equities, I would just select them, um, add them uh, to my portfolio. Again, this is simulation. We're not tied to a trading platform. But, again, that would give you a chance to uh, kind of track down some of the uh, equities in the, I guess, paper um, simulation mode before you actually even trade uh, live stocks with them. Now, let's step back for a second and, and let's identify how we got to those events that were defined here to be scanned for opportunities. So let's go and look at uh, the event analysis screen and let's pick up uh, you know, uh, an, an, an event uh, it's called um, Dow drops more than 1%. So essentially what we're saying here is let's look at what happens in, uh, in a good bull market when the Dow Jones drops 1% in one day and we identify stocks that have dropped more than 2% on the same day. Our theory is that there may be a subsection of stocks, maybe small cap or mid cap stocks 
that drop a lot more than the Dow when there's a market panic, and they recover uh, maybe five or 10 days thereafter, right? So we identified uh, these two events in conjunction. You see the Dow Jones drops uh, 1% in one day, and our equity universe, which is the Russell 3000, let's find which stocks out of the Russell 3000 dropped more than 2% on that very same day. And uh, let's run the, uh, uh, the, the, the scanning here to show you what the scan result would look like. Uh, this is a, a, a well-defined scan, so it comes back pretty quickly. But what you see here is the results. You can see the dates of the events that actually Dow dropped more than 1%. And you can see here how many times, um, you know, SGMO, for example, uh, have been uh, triggered in the past. And uh, you can see also uh, what it had done five days. Wow, that's a big jump here. 10 days, 15 days, or 30 day, uh, 20 days thereafter. Some of them actually went down. You see, it's not always, uh, always green, but the overall uh, behavior you can see on the bottom here is uh, you see two, sets, two sets of number. You have, uh, you have uh, uh, I'll explain what these are in a second, but essentially you can see the average return is always positive and the biggest uh, juice uh, or the biggest alpha comes uh, 10 days after uh, the event was triggered. Okay, so let me show you how the analysis uh, is going to manifest itself. So go to analysis shows you two things here. Shows you a heat map, which is already um, drilled down to the pharmaceutical and uh, uh, biotechnology and life sciences um, subsector. But if I click on the healthcare in the breadcrumbs here and go back to a previous higher level of, uh, of, of number of uh, you know, equities or universe, uh, you can see what happens here. It identifies 640 events, much more events than that. And you can see, by the way, why did I pick the pharmaceutical subsector? Because it shows me that the average return for that subsector is 2.20% versus only 0.65% for the healthcare and equipment and services. So I decided to drill down to that subsector to, again, identify the best chance for me to win if I'm going to act on this event in the future. Now, what you see on the bottom here is a, a very promising chart. You can see that this is the universe behavior uh, before the event has taken place. This is a drop of the 1% uh, in one day. They probably were drops uh, you know, a few days before that. But you can see what happens after the event. Almost immediately, this is a bull market we're talking about. So obviously, a small drop creates an opportunity for entry. I mean, that's the... I guess, uh, uh, commentary explanation, but that's what the data is telling us here. You can see that the first day uh, there is a jump, but there is actually a bigger jump five days later, and it's getting maxed out at, uh, at 10 days after the event. And you see, I've highlighted that um, upper section here. I still have 385 events total that match that criteria, but 128 events are represented in this uh, highlighted section. And you can see here that this section shows even a higher return in the aggregate, 5.18% uh, for five days, 6.75, 10 days. And again, it drops back down to 15, uh, 15 days, 3.3, and, and kind of flattens out after that. Uh, but again, these are the things you can do at, the, at this level or that level. Yes, Tucker. Um, I want to say that um, that event uh, chart down there at the bottom is... Uh... A really nice one for illustrating the approach. Um, you can, uh, you know, as I said, first leading up to the event, you see that sharp drop. So that's, you know, confirming our definition of the event. Uh, but you see a very nice climb in price up to the 10 day mark. And you can see that uh, it's really not worth holding the equities after the 10 days because it, uh, it, uh, they drop. So um, this is a, you know, kind of a classic example of showing how to implement, you know, how to, how to turn this particular event discovery into a trading approach, which is, uh, you know, buy on the day of the event and hold for uh, 10 days, but uh, don't hold after that. Right. Thank you, Tucker. That's, uh, that's uh, a good commentary. You know, one of the things that you can see on the right side here is those additional indicators. This is the machine deciding for us, look, you know, in this highlighted section, there are some additional opportunities to further refine your, your query or your scan to really give you a fantastic 
uh, uh, I guess, way to, to, to identify additional indicators that are not available to the naked eye. Uh, so it found, for example, that uh, simple moving average crossing of one month uh, uh, and simple moving average of two days or, or two weeks, so the one month versus two weeks, how they cross, that, that simulates a higher relevancy to the section that's highlighted here. I can click on that. And I can add that to my scan. And what happens now, it'll rescan and reapply the query using that extra parameter I've just added. That was going to hone down my result even further and gives me um, additional opportunities to decide if this is good enough for me. You see how the standard deviation, uh, which is this, the, the, the separation between the, the sample data, uh, is, is, is much smaller now. Uh, we still maintain a pretty good uh, return. But we have less stocks now in the event selection area. And if you have less stocks, it means you are really fine tuning it almost too much that it's not creating the relevancy that you need on the identifying uh, trends statistically. You may have found you know, one or two stocks that have behaved really, really well uh, by accident during that, t that time period. And it's not necessarily an applicable trend that you should apply for future future trading, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, strategies. And you have to be very careful to find that happy balance, not to add too many fine tuning indicators here, because then you're going to get a smaller subsets of data. Ares? Yes, sir. Uh, something I wanted to add here. So that um, uh, focusing on that panel on the right there with those uh, with the stars and so on, you mentioned it already, but I just want to go in a little bit more detail. So um, uh, up to this point in the study, uh, you've indicated, uh, you know, to the machine, okay, the, you know, my, my scan is defined as uh, when this thing happens and that thing happens, and then this indicator is between these two values. Uh, what's going on there on the left, and I just want to, I'm sorry, on the right, and I just want to repeat it because I think it's really important, is the system is, uh, is looking through hundreds of uh, fundamental uh, and technical indicators to find those that are the most selective in other words, uh, of all these hundred, which one can help you identify that uh, that sliver uh, the most effectively? And that scoring over there is telling you um, the quality of that uh, of that assessment. Uh, so it's a it's a really you know it's an example of the machine sort of augmenting uh, your insight. You know, you you began the study by having some ideas about what uh, what things might matter. Uh, but the machine then searches all these uh, automatically for you to, to help guide you forward to make it even better. Thank you. That's, uh, that's great information, Tucker. Um, you know, one of the things that you can do on the right side here is define the region uh, as you wish. So we can define, you know, uh, the standard, this is the first half standard deviation to the up and down from the result set. And you can uh, expand it any way you want to, again, hone down on the features that are most represented uh, by the uh, highlighted sliver. So once you've done that and you save the study, now you can do some testing, right? So you can go back and say, you know what, let me do a back test of a simulation using that specific uh, event. So uh, I'm going to basically uh, uh, do a short event for, for this year. And I'm going to, uh, again, I'll do it in sample, but just to show you how the process kind of works, I want to compare my results to the S&P 500. Uh, these are my transaction costs. Uh, based on the event results, I'm going to go long on the equities that were found. I'm going to keep them long for 10 days. So let me change the number of days to hold to 10 days here. I'm going to also uh, identify uh, uh, the ranking. Uh, what is the factor that allows me to select the number of equities out of the universe that I'm that I'm identifying. So let's the same, uh, uh, you know, uh, number of days since uh, the golden cross. Let's assume that the less days from the golden cross will give me the best chance to uh, have higher momentum. So so less uh, days since the golden cross in ascending order will be the selective criteria to rank out of the universe the number of equities that I like to to act upon. Let's put down here. You know, 30 equities, up to 30 equities, and uh, also let's put down 75% um, um, of the investment size uh, to of my cash to apply for any investment uh, condition. This is the exit criteria. Do I want to exit at all or no exit whatsoever? 
the stop loss uh, exit if I want to, or stop loss and stop gain on certain percentage. So again, you have multiple ways to simulate your trading strategy. Let's just keep it uh, simple here and no early exit. So I'm going to run this test quickly right now just to show you, uh, and again, this unrehearsed. I'm not sure what's going to come out of it, but uh, let's, let's just kind of see uh, how, how it comes out and how to read the, uh, the, the results. So to sort of um, re uh, reiterate what, what's happening here, so we spent some time uh, building a study and, and looking at, you know, on average what happens to uh, stocks when a particular event occurs. Um, and what you're seeing here is, okay, we're moving that into action. We're, we're actually trying it in uh, simulated uh, trading. So the, the orange line there you see is, um, I'll hand it back to you in just a second, Eris. No, no, <laughs> please, go ahead. You, Doing fine. you see is the, um, uh, the performance of this strategy, and it includes transaction costs and, and so on. Um, versus uh, the um, benchmark, which is, I believe is S&P 500. Uh, one thing to point out here is you see those flat areas. Those are times during which uh, no, um, uh, no events were triggered. So, uh, you know, if you were going to employ something like this uh, in an overall investing strategy, you might have several different strategies so that, you know, while uh, one is being triggered, uh, uh, well, just to ensure that uh, you've got multiple opportunities for investing, you might not want to let that money sit idle during those flat periods. Harris? Yes, thanks, Tucker. That's uh, you know an example. Obviously, the numbers are uh, very promising here, but remember, we're doing a test against the same uh, the same data that define the event. So in a way, it's in sample, and and the true test will be to take it to a different date range. You know, let's say uh, 2012. And I bet you that it's not going to be as sexy if you go back because we haven't really refined and defined this thing. It's just for simulation purposes. But I'm going to just run it through it just to show you what happens if I go, uh, let's say, from January 1st, 2012, uh, and run the same test uh, and just to see kind of how, how, uh, how it behaves. Um, so Ares now is running the test um, uh, in a different period of time from the one where he sort of trained the system. So this is... a uh, more realistic with regard to you know what you could actually accomplish, uh, because you know we're not back testing over the exact same period as the training. I also wanted to remind folks uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, enter them uh, into the question section. I've answered a few questions uh, uh, online, you know, with text responses, but uh, we'll answer them verbally too if if, uh, if we have time. Yeah, one of the questions that. Um, um folks had asked uh, is um, um, about uh, ex trading execution and trading platform uh, integration and and we are going to we're going to uh, uh, hopefully unveil that in the next few months so uh, be on the lookout for that um, the data shows uh, again uh, during uh, the year 2012 uh, uh, an okay uh, set of results nothing uh, nothing outrageously uh, fascinating but you can see that as we go from November um, uh, 2012 uh, into uh, 2013, which which actually has an overlap with our sa in sample uh, time frame, uh, is jumping uh, fairly nicely to the upside. Um, I, I want to give you uh, we have about five more minutes. I want to give you a quick overview of one more one more uh, um, event study with hurricanes because that's actually uh, have been tested out of sample and it's very very exciting to see how that works. So. Uh, again, we're looking at hurricanes, how they affect certain universal stocks before the event and then after the event. It's a simple event that uh, we've defined already before. I'm going to run um, a quick, uh, uh, you know, test against uh, the last, uh, let's say, uh, uh, three years of uh, of uh, of the hurricane, and this is all in sample, and show you what the results look like, and then we'll go into um, uh, an out of sample. It's a very quick test. I want to show you kind of what it looks like. So as it goes through uh, the process, uh, again, not too many hurricanes, so it'll be a smaller number of events. That's why I've uh, decided to apply 100% of my cash uh, to buy stocks that are promising as winners after the hurricane um, for the last uh, three years. And, and you can see kind of, uh, you know, what the results are showing, uh, huge jumps uh, during the events uh, um, um, occurrences themselves. This is again in sample. I'm going to do now. I want to go back now and do the same thing for the last 13 years. I want to go from 2000 because uh, there's hopefully more uh, sample data to go after 
from uh, January 1st, uh, 2000 till today, it should be a uh, fairly quick, quick uh, uh, test. And you can see uh, um, what the behavior is also um, with an out of sample uh, back test, the period that's, that's preceding the last three years. So just to um, uh, uh, add to that, um, you know, one reason you see sort of this uh, choppy behavior is the events are only triggered when there's a hurricane, but uh, the system has uh, identified which, uh, well, in concert with uh, the human, uh, which sets of stocks uh, respond most favorably and uh, which additional indicators are most useful to find those stocks. And so that's why you see those nice uh, jumps. Um, now, I don't remember what kind of stocks those were. Uh, 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 Ares, what, what do they tend to be? Are they um, probably not insurance stocks? <laughs> Let's take maybe, a look at it. Um, so you see it takes a little time to run the, the back test. I can put it in the background and then move to see uh, what uh, Tucker was asking about. Um, the specific stocks that we're looking at is uh, um, NASDAQ Financials 100 and S&P 500. And looking mm -hmm. at consumer discretionary, somehow uh, the system identified that to be the most predictive uh, you know, um, wow. average return uh, over the course of, uh, I guess, 15 days. We are holding for 10 days, which gives us um, some juice. We can probably have uh, extended our stay for 15 days to get even more, more return. Um, just quickly, uh, Tucker, I want to go back to my uh, event uh, study queue, to my back tester queue, and, uh, and see if the results had come back from my back tester. This is where you can go back and uh, view. This is actually it's generating the report now, as you can see. It's still in action, but you can see um, um, a similar results that uh, we've done before. Uh, this is the uh, result for the previous um, test. Uh, hey, so Ares, I, wanted, I wanted to suggest since we're getting close to 12 and uh, people might need to go, um, we were going to have uh, a special announcement. Uh, maybe you want to do that announcement and then come back to this result. So, so if sure. people can hang on for a minute, you can tell us that interesting uh, thing. Okay, good. So, uh, look, we have had uh, quite a few folks um, asking us how can they sign up and become uh, a customer, a uh, subscriber of Quandesk. Uh, you know, we are primarily geared for the professional investment community and decided to make a special uh, uh, access to our event analyzer to the first 100 customers that uh, are willing to uh, uh, take the plunge and uh, put some quantitative finance uh, behind their investment strategies. Uh, we're offering uh, Quandesk uh, event analyzer and event uh, and, and Quandesk back, te back tester uh, for 250 a month. These are only uh, two of the five modules that we are offering, but uh, we found the event analyzer to be a, a fairly applicable uh, tool for any investor and uh, wanted to extend that offer to uh, you know, a wider audience and, uh, and appreciate uh, some of the followers that have been uh, uh, coming and asking us questions and making suggestions and, uh, and uh, trying to be part of this, uh, this movement. So uh, this is kind of uh, our, our thank you and uh, offer to you. Great. That's a significant uh, discount, uh, by the way. Um, but we're, uh, this, uh, this event analyzer, um, I'm so excited messing with, you know, I, I, it's addictive um, and it really uncovers uh, interesting trading opportunities. I, I think um, I have to say it's a, uh, e even though I'm part of the company, I have to tell you, it's a great deal. Um. You can see the results for the last 13 years, um, by the way, from 2000 to 2013. It's a 447% uh, um, increase um, on that portfolio, on that investment strategy. You can see the transaction cost is about half a million dollars. Uh, the S&P has done 101%, which is uh, not too shabby. But again, uh, hurricanes are a pretty good indicator, even for out of sample time frame. So um, again, this is uh, just an example of... Uh, uh, we're not saying this is exactly how you're going to uh, profit from this uh, <laughs> from this tool set. It's just an example of showing you historically uh, through a back tester what a fine-tuned event can uh, can mean for uh, for any investor. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I uh, Tucker, any questions that you wanted to answer uh, that you have not answered, uh, kind of through a text uh, interaction with the uh, with the folks? Sure. Well, just a couple that I wanted to. Uh 
couple things I did want to highlight. Um, if um, if you have additional questions, send us your questions uh, to info, I-N-F-O, at lucinaresearch.com, and we'll get back to you individually. So if anything occurred to you that uh, you know you didn't have a chance to ask right now, we'll be glad to follow up with you. Um, a couple uh, couple other uh, particular uh, questions. Um, uh, uh, I see uh, Andres uh, sent us an, a question about, is it possible to see a combined backtest of multiple events together? The answer is, uh, is, um, is no, not at this time. This is uh, really testing an event uh, at a time. This is a very good idea, actually, that uh, we can consider for future releases. So anything such as that would be highly, highly valuable for us to receive any comment. I wish you had that. Uh, could you do this? And we take those under consideration and, uh, and actually implemented a lot of the things that you see here from user feed users' uh, feedback. Oh, uh, uh, two other questions. Two other points to make. Up. Um, person asked, um, uh, "Does the system include market data, or do you have to subscribe to that?" Um, uh, no, you don't have to subscribe. But we provide uh, the data, including uh, you know price volume history and also the event data. We do have some uh, premium data sources coming online, but everything that we've showed you so far today is just using uh, what's normally available within QuantDesk. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is all of our previous webinars are available on our website. Uh, if you uh, uh, if you go to the main page and then click on Community News, and then under that there's a link uh, to Media, and that's where all of our previous uh, webinars are available from. I see two more questions popping up. Uh, I think we're just about running out of time, so. Um... Um, I'd like to try and address them. I'll, I'll start addressing them real quick. But uh, again, if any of you have any questions, uh, feel free to email us or call us directly. Uh, we are here, readily available to answer anything. <clears throat> uh, the question is, can we use uh, our own data source? <clears throat> the answer is <clears throat> yes. Um, yes and no. It's not available out of the box within Quantesk. Um, our quants are available to support proprietary, unique uh, data sources uh, for subscribers. So uh, definitely check with us on how we incorporate that. Uh, it is something that we can do for you as well. Uh, let's see what else. Um, by the way, I just want to make sure I uh, explain a little bit more about, what, uh, more about what Tucker mentioned before. We do not resell the data in raw format. Everything you see here, price volume, is driven from price volume data, but it's not available to download at its core uh, format. This is all derived and presented as part of Quandesk, uh, and it's in the framework of using it within Quandesk. So just uh, keep that in mind. Um, there are a lot of uh, other questions coming through. I'll tell you what, um, there's just a lot of people that came on this webinar, and uh, I'm sorry if we missed uh, um, some of you and we cannot uh, uh, approach and respond to these questions now. But I'd love to uh, talk to you uh, offline, so feel free to email us or call us, and uh, we'll respond to you promptly. Um, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, to uh, be part of your community and and uh, share this one hour um, on on a pretty hectic day, I'm sure, in your personal uh, affairs. Uh, we're excited to uh, be part of this uh, investment community, and uh, uh, we have some great additional tools coming down the pike. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight, uh, this afternoon. <laughs>